Okay, now once you're done with your swatch, we have to block is what Marley calls it. Show me your swatch. So we haven't learned how to bind off yet, so we're gonna block his swatch before binding off. A good swatch should be at least five inches wide and tall to take an accurate gauge measurement. We'll talk more about that later. Keep practicing your knitting back and forth until you get there. Since we haven't taught the bind off yet, feel free to block your knitting on the needles. Just cut your yarn so that it is no longer attached to the ball before you start soaking. Make sure you have at least six inches of a yarn tail when you cut so that none of your stitches unravel. Fill a bucket or your sink with enough cold water to cover your swatch. If you have a wool wash, just use a little bit. If you don't, just use water. It'll be just fine and when your knitting is more advanced, you can purchase some. Swish your swatch around to get it completely wet and then make sure you keep it in the bath for at least 20 minutes. All right, now put your needles and your swatch into the water. What about the yarn? Not the yarn ball. Not the yarn ball, okay. While it's running. No, that doesn't really matter. Go ahead, stick it in there. Oh, gosh. All right, now turn the water off. That's plenty of water. Okay, now push it down there. Swish it. All right, now we're gonna let it soak for 20 minutes because that'll let it absorb let the fibers absorb the water. And then we'll pull it out and we'll get it to be, we'll get some of the water out, we'll blot it, and then we'll let it dry. And then we'll see what your gauge is. What do you say? Remove your swatch from the water and drain your sink or empty your bucket. Roll your swatch up in a clean towel and press down to blot out as much water as you can. Don't rub your swatch against itself because you don't want to hurt it. Take your swatch out of the towel and stretch it from side to side and up and down. Don't be shy, give it a good tug. Then place your swatch on a dry, clean towel. Okay, we have had our suitable blocking time and now Charlie's gonna drain the water and pick up your project. Now gently squeeze it out. Let's try to squeeze some of the water out. There you go. Now set it on a towel. Now fold the towel over on top of it so that it's like well, layers. Not the needles. That's they're fine. Just leave them over there. Okay. Now I usually actually kind of roll it up to to squish out any of the water. Okay. Now press it down real firmly. There you go. Okay. Now open it back up. Now, is the other side of your towel pretty wet or is it pretty dry? The other side. Oh, the other side. Oh, it's dry. Okay, so flip the towel over. Get a new towel at this point if your towel is soaking wet. So if you want to have a dry surface for your swatch to dry on or pretty dry. Okay, now stretch out the stitches horizontally and vertically. So that means stretch on the sides. Yeah, stretch, pull it out that way a little bit more. You can, you can really work at them a little bit there, especially because it's garter stitch, so it's really gonna stretch out. There you go, and now we're gonna let it dry, and then we're gonna see what your gauge is, and you can start a project. Gauge is the word used to describe the number of stitches and rows in a certain area of your fabric. It's usually measured across four inches. Make sure you use the needles and yarn you're going to use in your project when you knit a swatch. You should always be knitting a swatch as part of your project. And make sure to block it before you measure. Gauge is really important when you're knitting something to wear. If you don't have the same gauge as your pattern, you might have worked really hard to knit your project and then it might not fit you. All right, Charlie has blocked his gauge swatch. Remember we left it on the needles because we haven't taught the bind off yet. So we just went ahead and blocked it right on the needles. And now he's going to take his gauge measurement. Measure only the center of your swatch and do not include the stitches or rows along the edges. The front or right side of a knit stitch looks like a V and each purl, which is the back side of it, is more of a U shaped bump. You'll see both of these on both sides of your swatch since we were knitting every row. 
Use safety pins to mark your center four inches. That way you don't need to hold your measuring tape on your swatch while you're counting. Okay, lay it down, Charlie. So what I want you to do is grab this tape measure, open it up, and you can use these two pins. You need to mark four inches worth of stitches sideways. And, and you want to make sure that you take the measurement. Nope, go down and kind of in the middle of your swatch. There you go. And don't put, you don't want your end stitches. You want the four inches in the center of the swatch. So put a pin at four and at zero. We're using pins to mark because with garter stitch, it can be a little... This is tricky to this count it so this way we won't have to have the measuring tape actually on it when we're counting our stitches so now you can take the measuring tape off and you're going to count the number of stitches that go from here to here and each one of these bumps is one stitch, but you need to either choose the bottom bump or the top bump to count, not both. Okay, 16 and there's four inches. So, so if there's 16 stitches in four inches, how many stitches are in one inch? Four. That's right. So when we um, work on a pattern, if you're using these needles and this yarn, you need to know that your gauge is four stitches over one inch or 16 stitches over four inches. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing, only we're gonna count your rows. So you can take those markers out. Now take that tape measure and measure four inches up and down this time. And again, do it kind of the center four inches. Do you remember what I said about um, the bumps when you were working? What yes. do they? What are they? What are the bumps? Uh, stitches. <laughs> stitches. Yeah, but when we knit each row and we were talking about what the bumps represent, the bumps are the back of a knit stitch. So every time you see a bump, that's a purl bump. So that means when we were counting sideways, we counted every bump. But guess what we're going to count when we're going up and down? If it's only on the, the wrong row. side, yeah, but if the purl bump is only showing the back of the knit stitch, every purl bump you see represents how many rows? One? Two. Two. Because on one row you were knitting forward, so you kind of stretch this out to see it a little bit. Your knit rows are the ones that look like the V's, and then when you came back and knit across it going in the other direction, you get a purl bump. So every bump is actually two rows and um because of that garter stitch is actually pretty easy to count All right so after counting the pearl bump rows how many of those did you have 28 well we had 14 pearl bump rows which means that it's actually 28 rows so that means your gauge is 16 stitches and 28 rows in four inches so what's 28 divided by four uh, seven. Seven. So that means that we have seven rows in one inch. So four stitches in seven rows is one inch. And that is Charlie's first gauge. And that's in garter stitch. So that's in a stitch pattern too. Yay. With measurements from a blocked gauge swatch, you're now ready to start knitting a real project. Next week, I'll have a free pattern for you to download and we will talk about how to follow it. This pattern will feature the cast on we learned and the knit stitch only. It will also include instructions for a few different gauges so that you shouldn't have to knit a second swatch just yet. We decided to reorganize our classes a little bit and hold off on teaching the purl just to make sure you really get the knit stitch down before adding a second technique. Don't worry, we promise to teach this stitch too when you've had plenty of time to master the knit. Keep practicing! What do you say? Yeah, sure. Okay, that just makes me feel very bad. Why? 
I just put my knitting in water. <laughs> yeah, but that's how it that's how it blooms. It'll become prettier okay. after you do that. Okay. Blocking is magic, Charles. Okay. 